oh hey guys i was just admiring this polished rock and this rock so that's what the video today is going to be about it's going to be all about rocks um how do you go from this polished pretty pleasing um from this this rough rock so this rock didn't come out of this rock they're two different colors but what comes out of this rock will be very similar probably to what this looks like i got them both out of my creek out of Stamy creek and in the video i'm going to show you all the steps it takes here to here and i think you'll be interested um in how it works it's kind of kind of a little bit more involved than what you might think um there's a very long history of cutting and polishing gemstones the lapidary arts have been going on for many thousands of years and i think what fuels them is people's deep desire to know what's in here and what does it look like and that's half of half of the reason i do it what does it look like in there and what could I do with it? So, um, I don't facet. I'll be clear about that. I love faceting, but I don't know how to facet. So, I will one day. But what we're going to look at is called cabochon making. So, a cabochon is like taking a bead that you would string onto a necklace or a bracelet and cutting it in half. So, it would essentially be flat on one side and rounded and polished on the other. So, that's what I know how to do. Um, faceting is great. It's just above my head at this time. So I use a Genie Lapidary machine, which I will show you. Um, and I would say that the Lapidary arts have come a long way. Some of the beginning methods of, of cutting and polishing rock were extremely primitive, but they used what they had. So I am blessed to have my machine and it's, it seems fast and easy and very compact compared to how things started, oh, I don't know, in the 17, 1800s when, um, cabochon making and agate digging seem to become popular so we are going to look at that i want to say one thing before we do two things one i want to wear my eye protection my ear protection and my respirator because i want to protect my lungs i'm going to go ahead and be protected I also wear a big apron kind of looks like a butcher's apron but that's what i wear because i don't want to take a bath and stain all my clothes with rock dust and the second thing i want to say is kind of got two parts the first part is a big thank you a big thank you to everybody here at the channel for letting us live our dream, for letting us do what we want to do, for all the interest that um, has been shown in Stamy Creek, in my creek. That is just the, the sweetest, most beautiful, tender place that I can possibly imagine. And God has given me this gift to, literally, it's my job to go to the creek. Isn't that funny? I literally have to go to the creek to make rocks to get paid. So that is a blessing. I love the creek. The creek means everything to me it's just the sweetest most specialist place in in my heart and in my world and it all comes from god and i'm very grateful and very thankful so let's get into this video if you have any questions drop them into the comments below let's get started so i've got some examples here um this is a creek rock this is this is a cabochon that i've cut out of a creek rock that i found um and as you can kind of see, if I can turn it up, you can see it is rounded there and it is flat, perfectly flat on the back. So this is just a really pretty little rock and I'll just go ahead and tell you, Stamy Creek doesn't usually give me red like this. She almost never gives red. Um, and it's usually a struggle to find it when I do. So this is a really interesting little piece here. Um, and then I have another interesting kind of thought here another interesting view so this i didn't get from my creek but i got locally here where we live so this is actually what it looks like rough this is the rough look um and this is what would come out of this so you can see similarities here this interesting little um kind of black little squigglies if you want to say and that's kind of what you find here so and I find a lot of this stuff. What I think this is to be, what would you say, your geological terminology here. I believe the white material here is calcite. I believe the black is a mineral called hornblende. And I believe the red little dots are garnets. So, not that this matters. You don't need to know this, but I will tell you anyway. This is what they would call, um, I would call it hornblende, the black mineral. And garnet, the red mineral, in matrix. This white material is kind of the parent rock the base rock the background rock so anyway this is an example you you would go from this to this 
Um, and that's kind of what this video is going to be about. It, and it's kind of trusting the vision. That's one thing that you have to have to do this is the vision. The vision to see that this is in there. When I pick up a rock, I'm like, and depending on how big the rock is, I'm like, how many of these can I get out of there? I might get two out of that one. If I cut it in half, I might. Um, but yeah, it does take a vision to pull this out of there and believe that you can. So let's go get started. One more thing, this rock that I'm about to show you is not a creek rock, but it is the very first cabochon that I ever made. Let's bring it in here. So this one is kind of interesting. It's got what they call vugs, open places in the rock, and they're usually filled with little crystals, crystal formations. So this is the first cabochon that I ever made. And I started with a little bit of help. It was kind of already formed out and I made it in a class. So they had you start with something that was kind of already formed up a little bit for you to make it easier. But all the doming and the polishing was me. And this was the very first one that I ever made. So I keep it. This is the date, first cab ever. So 2019, so I've really, I've been a rock hound my entire life for 25 years. The second I could walk, I was picking up rocks and putting them in my mouth and throwing them at other children, which is not a nice thing to be doing. Um, but this is the first time I got into a classroom and got hooked up with this equipment and learned how to do it. So I guess I've been doing it about two years. November will be two years. So, all right, enough about my sappy memory lane, let's go. So, this rock is very weathered, you can see, but you also see a little bit of color here. So, what I would do is I would pick up something that looked like this, um, and there's very few, very few signs on the outside, but there's a few that would give me the idea that this might be something I would want to work with, that it could be solid or promising. So, what I would do is I would just hold on to it, take it home, and see what I think when I get there. So usually without looking through this window here, you can just hear a change in the saw. And so you know that your slab has fallen off. And then usually I'll open the hood and kind of stand back for a minute. There's just some steam. It's not really gonna hurt you. Um, but you may not wanna breathe it. So I kind of just give it a minute. And so then we'll run our rock back and look at our slab. This is a little bit of a thin one, but that's okay. Um, it'll still work just fine. And the next step really is just to clean it up, make a shape, and go ahead and trim it out. Next, what we'll do is we'll decide what shape we want, and we will get a stencil and a marker and draw that on there. You could, if you wanted, go ahead and just take this straight to the machine, freeform it, come up with your own shape. Now, this is not a creek rock, but if we had a piece this big, you're gonna get more options as far as how big your shape and what you want your shape to be. With a piece this small, you're not gonna have that many options. So for a piece this small, pretty much ovals are gonna be your best friend. So what I would do then is just um, pick whatever size oval I thought I could fit on there and um, draw it in. Sometimes I'll go just one smaller just draw a shape and so then that gives me a guide when I go to my trim saw I can cut there and I can cut there and there and then um, I'll have cut this shape out so stay tuned and we will go to the next saw which is a smaller saw <laughs> okay so the next step is to cut this out so um, you could take this to the machine just how it is and then take off the edges but what you want to do for yourself is save the most um save your wheels from the most wear and tear possible by going ahead and trimming your shape out so you do that on this saw this saw um you have to do by hand there's no automated system there's no dead man switch or hood that you close this is all you um this is a very safe saw there's no risk here really the only thing you want to do is eye protection and ear protection if you do not want to take a bath, wear the apron. So what you're going to do, you're going to turn your saw on and you're just going to follow your lines um, and see what happens. Occasionally you go to cut a rock and it falls all to pieces. It fractures. And if that's the case, then you start over, you try again, or you just go with a different shape. But 
That is okay. It should not take long at all to do this one. I'll put my safety glasses on. Earphones. So essentially that is it. I got a little bit closer to the line than what I would have liked to on that side, but no big deal. Um, there's a little extra on this side and you can always kind of change your shape as you go to the machine. Well, this is a, um, say hello, Corey. Hello. <laughs> this is a Genie um, Diamond Pacific machine. You have six wheels running through a motor on a um, single arbor there. These are steel wheels, 80 grit, 220, 280. Um, and 600 and I forget what these are. But basically the important thing about this is, is these are the only two wheels on this machine that are steel wheels, which means the body of them is made of steel. And this is diamond grit on these wheels. They're kind of dirty right now because I've been using them. And then this is your first resin bonded wheel. So you can see when I push on this, it kind of pushes in some. So these are resin bonded which means that the grit that is on them is actually bonded to this squishy resin instead of steel, which these are steel, there's no squish there. Um, so you just go in progression like you would with any sandpaper. You go from here to here. This wheel right here is, is where most of your cleanup is gonna take place. Um, it is the workhorse, it is the wheel I replace the most. I think this is like the fourth wheel I've had of this one since I started and it's getting to be kind of wore out to be honest. Um, and then you just would go to this one, this one, and this one, and every wheel on this machine will take scratches out from the wheel before it. So that's the idea. I have three more wheels other than what's on the machine here. And what I will do when I get done is stop the machine and take these wheels off and put the last three final wheels onto this side and go from there. So here we go. This machine works off of a geyser system. This is what they call the geyser or what we call it in, um, when I took a class and what I learned to call it by is a spitter. It pulls this water out of your pan up and splashes it on the wheels. So every time you change wheels, you just move your water source with you. Um, this is a very safe machine. There really isn't any problems. There's no reason to have your hands here or anywhere like that while the machine is running. So there's really no problem. I wear safety glasses, an apron, and a respirator like we talked about before to protect my lungs, my seeing, and my hearing. So essentially, you just want to start by taking this shape out of this rock here. So what the process, and I'm going to show you before I turn it on because it'll be so loud you won't be able to hear me. You're just going to start while the machine is running and you take the edge straight to the machine here and you just grind it down until you meet your line. And then when you get done with that, you move to the next one. And you do the same thing. Even though you've already met your line, you're kind of just lightly taking the scratches out that this wheel left. Once you do that, a lot of the times I will decide at that point which is the top and which is the bottom of the stone. It is generally accepted that where you drew a black mark is the bottom, but it doesn't have to be. For whatever reason, if you have a chip on this side and you're like, I just can't get rid of that chip, make the other side the bottom. Because when you go to dome it, this is gonna disappear if that's where your chip is at. So I will decide at that point what's top, what's bottom. Usually when I decide what the bottom is, I'll kind of curve the edge a little bit to take away any rough spots. I will then come to this wheel and I will polish the bottom just a little bit. And then it is ready to be dopped. Put on a stick with some hot wax essentially so that I can hold on to it when it comes time to actually bevel the edge and, and really make the shape out of your stone there so we will get to that part but all you have to do now is turn it on and go
So as you can see, this kind of ended up a shape that's a little less oval than maybe what I would have wanted, but sometimes the rock just speaks for itself and it does whatever it wants. And it could be that one side of this rock was softer than the other, so it cut away faster than the other. But you still have a little bit of wiggle room when it comes time to forming it, that, that this shape may change just, just a tiny bit. But this is essentially it. Um, and I decided that this isn't going to be the bottom for me. I wanted the other side to be the bottom because there's a little bit of softer material up here that I want to make disappear. So that'll be my bottom. So now we're going to go and essentially stick this into some hot wax. So now what we're going to do, this is called a DOP, D-O-P, DOP pot. Um, and this wax here is very hot. This is just hot wax. You can set your stone up here on this part where where the um this will go ahead and heat your stone up because what what you need to do essentially to stick the wax to this stone is make sure your stone is good and hot and that your wax is good and hot so this is just oak dowel that i bought at lowe's in a big long sticks and i cut it to kind of handle size lengths for myself and these have all already been used as you can see this is the wax that was on there before and it was holding another stone and it, it's okay that the wax is still on there because what you're going to do is just pick a size that you think works best for you. What you think will fit your stone the best. Like, I think that one was pretty good. And then you're just going to stick it into this hot wax and kind of spin it around and let it set. And that hot wax that's already in there will melt the existing wax on your stick. And then you just wait a little while, let that get hot, and then we'll show back up and stick them together. So now it is time to dop. So what you wanna do is just spin your dop stick around, make sure that other wax has melted. And then you just um, stick it to it. And you just kind of, you know, mash the wax down the best that you can. And we're not there yet, so but this is the idea. Okay, it is pretty level now. It is dopped, and what we're going to do is just wait because this wax is going to cool and it's going to get really hard. And when it does, we'll just scrape off this wax that got up on the stone. It's not going to hurt your machine. So the next step that we want to do is we want to dome this rock here. Um, and some of this wax, it doesn't really doesn't matter if you take it off or not. I'm just going to let the machine get it. Um, it's not going to hurt the wheels. Not that big of a deal. So how we're going to do this is we're not going to start like this we're going to start at a 45 degree or 30 degree angle and we're just going to go from this top edge down and um, bevel it so then you've kind of got this angle all the way around and i'll do that and i'll show you what it looks like So here's the bevel that I was talking about, and it's just a bevel that goes all the way around. And then essentially the idea is to bring that bevel in closer and closer and closer until the top disappears. So you can kind of see that the top is somewhat gone so at this point the easiest thing to do now is just to rock back and forth and smooth over this top part and now you kind of have your basic your basic dome and so the next thing you would want to do is finish cleaning that up here on the wheel that we're on and then you take it to the black wheel So you can see it's kind of kind of getting smooth, kind of smoothing up there. And um, this is just what you continue to do. So we're going to continue to smooth it up to where we are happy with it on the black wheel, and then we'll move on. So I brought this out here in the sun so you could see a little bit better. So it's taken shape, you can see. And one thing I did but did not video was these edges. You can kind of see a sharp edge that's in this. I went back to that second um, steel wheel and kind of cut myself an edge back in there because sometimes you kind of cut the edge away as you're shaping it. And that edge is called your bezel line. And that is where um, whoever sets this into a necklace or who, if I do it, um, 
as kind of a, a straight little line for your bezel to go to hold that stone into your setting. Um, so you can kind of see it's taking shape. It's good as you go to dry that stone off because all stones look good wet because water on a rock simulates a polish. And there's things you can't see um, when it's wet. So like those things could be right here, right there. That's a little vug, a little hole, a little pit. And there's one right there too. So that's something I can go back and try to cut around and get out of there. So this is the final product coming off of that black wheel. Um, it's definitely smaller than when I started. It's much smaller than when I started. But again, that's just sometimes how this goes. Um, you run into problems that you didn't see in the rock. And there's really no way to see the problems until you cut the rock. So at this point, we will move on from that black wheel to the purple wheel. And we will do everything at the purple wheel that we did at the black wheel. So this is what it looks like at this point. So it has been through all the wheels. It has been through those and it has been through these. And so, um, get it to focus there. So it's really pretty right now. It's actually wet. So it's going to look pretty of course, but, um, what we need to do now is we will switch these three wheels out with, um, my three final polish wheels. And then this bad boy will be done. So the hood is just going to pop right off and then we're going to pull this pan out and very carefully and not carefully enough one handed set it on the floor and we have spilt some of it but that's okay. So what I'm going to do is get myself a wrench and take these off. So here's my wrench. So here's our set of wheels that we are going to put on. And you gotta put these spacers between the wheels. And you gotta put the wheels in order. So we're gonna do that. And then there's actually a homemade spacer over here that I use. And then we will put on, there we go. So I need just a little bit more water because I dumped a lot of mine out on the floor. I'm gonna put just a little bit more in. So at this point we are done and we have taken this particular rock through nine wheels through the first three two steel wheels and a black one the other set that was on here before these were those and then these polishing wheels last so at this point you're saying that's great but how do you get that off the stick now well, the answer is um, there's more than one way to do it. You could heat it back up and take it off, or you can go ahead and put this in um, the freezer and the wax is going to get brittle and it's going to break and the rock will fall off. So let's do that. So we are going to walk it to the freezer and you can see that this isn't the first rock that I've put in here. I'm bad to leave my wax behind, um, but this is where it's going to stay for about 30 minutes. At this point, we come back and check and see, oh, and it fell right off. Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. It just depends. One last thing, if there's any wax left on the back, I will um, get this razor blade, this like old rusty razor blade, and um, get it off. So we got the wax off the back and this is the final product. Um, I wish you could see how shiny it is. 
in person it's so shiny it's really pretty um so this is the final product all right so that is how it's done that's how you go from the rough rock that you find to um this to the polished piece to the pretty little thing that you can look at when you're done with all the hard work so thank you for watching thank you for all your support here on our channel and stay tuned because we'll be coming at you with more content as always one thing I do wear my safety glasses, I wear my earmuffs, and I wear my respirator because, uh, you know, hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. You know, you're not going to be doing none of that if your eyes are put out and your lungs are full of rock dust and your ears are um, rotted out because this, I shouldn't have said that. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll pick back up. Hey, how many times have I told you, stop looking at my rocks. These are my rocks and I don't want you to have them. I don't want you to have these. Over. You got, Corey about got attacked by a spider. No, I thought you said you got attacked by a spider. No. You're going to fall over if you don't no, take no. stuff seriously. I feel something on my leg and it scared me. There's nothing on your leg. All I right. I thought I saw something. Okay, there's not. I'm going to get back to my thing here. Okay. okay, so why can't I show all the rocks? could be showing... They don't want to see all the rocks. They don't want to see all the rocks. I'm marching, because if I march, maybe I'll make more of these rocks appear.